Chris here, and I have in my hands today the Mi 8 Explorer Edition. Finally, it is out and finally shipping from China, but it is quite expensive. In fact, a lot more you have to pay for this model currently at the time of this video over the standard Mi 8 that I reviewed. So in this video, I'm not gonna go into an extreme amount of detail like I did with the other phone, the standard edition. So the Mi 8 I've already reviewed, I've covered that, I've done camera comparisons, so please refer to those videos if you want more information about the cameras, benchmarks, and things like that. I will cover only just the minimum here and focus on the three key differences. So this model here has now 3D face unlocking proper 3D mapping. It is the first Android phone to do that. It has an in-screen fingerprint reader, and unfortunately, that in-screen fingerprint reader tech comes at the cost of, of the battery capacity. So it's been reduced from 3,400 milliamp hours in the Mi 8 to only 3,000 now. So that's gonna impact, of course, the battery life. It won't be as long on this one as it is on the Mi 8. And then the rear of it, we have a transparent back. So you can look at the layout of the internals. But what you're looking at isn't actually the internals directly. They'll put like a plastic over the top of it so it just looks fancy and it's very pretty to look at and something different. Now Xiaomi would have put just the chipset, the RAM, the UFS storage all exposed and then just the glass. That chipset of course would overheat so you can see the reasoning why they've done that. So this model I picked up here from Trading Shenzhen and it's very hard to get hold of at the moment. Everyone's got to go through basically dealers and the price of it is just so inflated but it will be coming down eventually once more of these get out into the market. So you can see the packaging, the box here is twice as big as the typical standard version, the Mi 8. So obviously they've done something a little bit different here and nothing on the black back of it. So it's got the slip on the top. Okay, so you can see there is the phone and they've put a transparent case around it. So that's the same theme, of course, as the case on the rear of this phone. So take a look and see what else we get in this box here. So there's something right here. They've actually put this in English this time and Chinese. So if you'd like to read that, then go ahead now and pause the video. And under that, we have our Type-C to USB cable, but this time around, it is red. So they've made just an aesthetic little change there to make it look a little different. And then the little charger. So this is rated to 12 volts, 1.5 amps, maximum output, quick charge, three. And even the charger plug has a red accent to it. And then lastly, we have this slip here. So this will probably have the warranty cards and it should have our case. Hopefully, Xiaomi has changed the case here. Instead of the TPU style one, give us something a little different. So warranty card, something there in Chinese, the SIM tool, and then of course the 3.5 millimeter jack adapter. So no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this and no micro SD support. So if you need both of those, then this obviously is not the phone to get. So yes, it looks like they have changed the case here. Slightly different, transparent back on it, which is great. So you can still look at those internals. And then it's just a rubber around the outside. So it just has this protective film over the screen. That's just for transit. Obviously that comes off. And I will check the weight of it, why not? Just to see if it's gonna be lighter or heavier. So 177 grams. And 7.8 millimeters thick. That's without the camera, which just sticks out a little bit. That brings it up then to 8.5 millimeters with the camera. Taking a look at that extra wide notch here, even that top bezel, they could have slimmed that down a little bit. But hey, you know, it's what it is and we just have to accept that. It does have a very nice AMOLED panel on it though. So the earpiece, rather small, they did have to size that down for the tech they've put in here. The front facing camera, you can see obviously, and then a little hard to make out because it is quite dark here. We've got an additional couple of sensors right here. On the top, you can see the metal frame here is rounded off, smoothed off nicely. We have 2.5 D inches on the glass, antenna lines there, and then just the microphone on the top. So that secondary mic, of course, is for noise cancellation and calls, and then for video as well. And then a very minor change here to those metal buttons on the right-hand side. So they've painted the power button now red. The volume rocker and this power button, they're both made out of metal. They have a good feeling to them, and they do not rattle around like some phones. So along the bottom, you'll find a single loudspeaker, even though it looks like two. It's in fact, one of them is just the microphone, our Type-C port, then two antenna lines. So the Mi 8 and the Mi 8 Explorer, they're not gonna win any records here for having the smallest chin in the world. It's still quite obvious there. And I really wish that they'd actually put capacitive touch menu keys in this space, at least make use of it. 
Now that sim tray which is on the left hand side, it is made out of metal and it does have a rubber gasket around it. So that's going to help keep out water if you accidentally did happen to get a little bit on it and even dust too in the long run. And now onto the cool part of the phone here. So here's the transparent back with the layout of the chipset. So it says Snapdragon on there you can see. And obviously this is all actually just fake, but the screws do look real. Those screws that are holding it into place there, they in fact look real. So the markings on the chip, that's Qualcomm's logo. It says Qualcomm Snapdragon. Just below it, it says AI Engine, and it just lists like the part number for that to make it look like you're looking at the real chips here. And like I mentioned at the start, if this was all exposed and this was what it actually looked like, uh, then it would overheat straight away. You'll get thermal throttling, and then with the two 12 megapixel cameras on the rear, it says dual camera there, and it's just listing the fact that it's uh, 1.4 micrometers in size, the pixels on that main sensor. And this area right here you're looking at that says innovation for everyone, that would be where the NFC antenna is. So on the rear we have the Mi logo there and you can see another fake printed circuit board with real torque screws screwing it into place and it reads, be the coolest company in the hearts of our users. And here it is in the case which of course fits perfectly it's from the manufacturer. It says designed by Xiaomi in Beijing, 8th anniversary edition and you can still see all of those pretty looking internals and around the top it covers the screen nicely so perfect cutouts there for the top microphone for the ports at the bottom and it does raise up a little bit so if you were to put this flat face flat down it won't touch the screen but only just overall a very nice case and feels great in hand build quality of the phone overall is very good it is definitely a flagship premium phone so the rear of it definitely stands out it looks a lot different than your typical phone and i actually like it i think it looks all right it's a nice change so even though what we're looking at is fake, I know that's going to disappoint a lot of people. If it wasn't fake, and if it was the shielding, electromagnetic shielding, the heat spreader for the chipset and everything, this is what we would actually be looking at. Something like that, you can see with my Mi 6. So of course, looking at that is not as nice as looking at, even though it's fake, this circuit board layout. Okay, so I've just jumped straight into the phone here. I've gone through the setup already. I've covered all of this, the display and various other things in my unboxing video of the standard model of this one. So please do check that out if you want more information. So it is still not shipping with MIUI 10. That is still in beta, but later on at some point it will be shipping with MIUI 10 there. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering, where is the status LED? Well, here it is. It's actually inside the earpiece now. They've had to have moved it and it's just in white. So I wonder if this is gonna compromise that earpiece even further, having to reduce the size of it, even over the Mi 8 Standard Edition. So now I'm gonna add my face here. It's asking for your 3D face data, and you can see there is a little disclaimer at the bottom, still telling you that it's not gonna be as secure as a password, but this method should be a lot better than the 2D face scanning, which can be fooled quite easily. So I've got the camera and all the other rubbish in the way. I'm gonna see if I can do this on camera. Okay, it's telling me to look at it, turn my head to the right. Open my eyes wider, turn my head to the right. Okay, I think I need to get a little closer. Okay, open my eyes wider. Is it scanning my face? Turn your head to the left. I've done it, I've lowered my head. Okay, actually that is done. It took a little while longer because of course I've got the camera and the tripod in the way there. Now let's see how this works. So, obviously you're gonna to have to wait the phone first. And now, that was very quick, very quick. I'll do that again. Yeah, that is really fast. Okay, so now you can't see anything. I'm gonna try this now in complete darkness almost. And that's still really quick. Okay, it takes a little while longer, but so far that seems to be Pretty impressive, not bad at all. And then onto the fingerprint reader now. So I'm setting it up as you can see. It's your typical setup. So you need to move your finger slightly. You get the vibration to confirm it scanned it. And you can see it is lighting up there on the screen. So that's the space we have. So that is now done. I'm gonna lock the phone. And now you can see it's just popped up like the Vivo Nix S. 
And that speed's not too bad. That is fast. I don't think that's too too much slower really than the rear fingerprint reader on the Mi 8. Okay, a little bit slower there. Try that again. So you can see where you need to place your finger. Now this being an AMOLED panel, I am slightly concerned in the long run about screen burn. So if it's always going to be that set error I area, I can imagine that after maybe two or three years you will see, or even less than that after a year, you might see a little bit of burn in there. So hopefully Xiaomi is just going to move that animation slightly. But yeah, that speed is good. Now I also did want to check out that dual frequency GPS. So it is actually working properly here, getting an accuracy of around about now four to three meters and it's locking on and using every single satellite. Now what was happening with my Mi 8, the standard edition you could say, is that uh, I tested it again just before I ended up selling that model that it would get the accuracy of around three or four and then it always keeps showing an accuracy of about eight meters, double this one here, but it seems that that's either been fixed hardware wise here or they've fixed it via software, which is good to see. So there we go, this is a shorter video from me because yes, I've already covered this mobile phone, so that's why I just wanted to focus on what is different here. But I can summarize very quickly, having owned the Mi 8 for quite some time, so I had that one for about six weeks and I used it. It is a good phone, the notch obviously, you're either gonna love it or hate it. Uh, what annoyed me wasn't the size of the notch more, but it was just the fact you couldn't see some notifications uh, straight away that you had to slide the notifications down to view everything. It's not going to be there at the top. That's just a minor thing, but it's something you need to bear in mind. And also bear in mind that this model with 400 milliamp hours less means that it will charge probably under two hours. So the full charge times will be faster than the Mi 8 in my testing. But then the full battery life, you're probably looking about around about an hour less of on-screen time. So this one will get around uh, under ideal conditions on wireless, continuous use, about eight hours of on-screen time, whereas you'll get around nine, perhaps nine plus on the Mi 8, the standard edition. So it does look really nice. I think it actually looks nice. I do like the look of this here. And then of course we've got that fingerprint read. I'll demonstrate that again. It's quick, not quite as fast as the rear one, but it's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. And I have used the Vivo Nix S, I reviewed that one, which seemed to be around about the same speed as this, perhaps even a little bit slower there. So the speed is, I feel, is perfectly fine uh, for that fingerprint reader, but you probably won't actually be using it. You'll be using the face unlocking. So I'll lock the phone and then I'll tap to unlock and you can hear that confirmation noise that it unlocks straight away. So no one's probably ever going to actually be using the fingerprint reader once you set up face unlocking. My test, it was almost pitch black in here. There was no light whatsoever. I put the shutters down, everything, and it worked fine. It unlocked quite quickly. Now the security wise, a password, as they even mentioned with the disclaimer, is going to be more secure than this. So it is a nice phone. The build quality is good. It has an AMOLED panel. Right now that price is just ludicrous. No one in their right mind will be buying one of these. Only us crazy YouTubers that want to review it and get some views uh, will be doing something like that. So of course, wait for the price to drop down. At the moment, dealers have got it. There's very, very limited stock. Uh, Xiaomi are only putting out a few every week or so. But once they go past that, once a lot of units are out there, they're in the market, that price is gonna to start to really plummet. And then it may be worth considering. But me personally, if I was gonna be looking between the Mi 8 and then the Mi 8 Explorer, um, it's a no brainer for me. Save the money, go for the Mi 8. I mean, you got the same exact phone, you got better battery life on that one. Unless of course you must have that really flash looking back on it and you wanna wow your friends or someone uh, with the in-screen fingerprint reader, even though you won't be using it, you'll be using the 3D face unlocking. So as I mentioned in this video a couple of times, please do check my review of the Mi 8 and then camera comparisons. I also have in the description further videos on the Mi 8. Thank you so much for watching and I do hope to catch you back in the next one. Bye for now.